Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Thank God for blessing us to see another day. Realize that we could have been numbered among the dead, but God has blessed us to be numbered among the living. We appreciate God for his mercy and his grace toward us. Let's go ahead and take care of kingdom business. Go ahead and share our feed. A lot of times they'll, they'll put up about 10, 15 groups. They ask me if I want to share to when I say yes, share to all of them. So let's go ahead and share to as many places as we can. I'm telling you this, I am sharing to these different places. Anything that has anything to do with Jesus, I am sharing. All right. All right, and then I'm going to share on my page, and I'm going to be ready. Thank God for each and every one of you who are back here with us to study God's word, to pray and call on the name of the Lord. If we ever needed to call on his name, we sure need to call on him now. By way of good news, I'm just, uh, I am just appreciate God for blessing us to, um, that the COVID cases are down in Mississippi so much. And I thank God for that. I thank God for his mercy and his grace. I realize it's not because of anything we did, but it's because of what God did, how he blessed us and how he lifted the veil, if you allow me to say that. All right, let's go ahead and begin to pray. Dear God, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for being so good to us. We realize, God, that it was nobody who woke us up this morning and started us on our way. You clothed us, God, and you gave us our right mind. And we want to say thank you, God. Thank you for being so good. Thank you for being so faithful and so kind. You didn't do these things because we deserve them, God, but you did them because you are good. And we just want to say thank you, God. We say thank you, God, for keeping us alive. And not only did you keep us alive, but then you blessed our family members, our church members. You blessed our work family. God, you are good. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace toward each and every one of us. We didn't get any bad news that somebody had gone on. We didn't get any bad news that somebody has been in an accident. God, we thank you for your mercy and we thank you for your grace toward us. God, we pray for the mayor of this city. We pray for the city council. God, we pray for the governor of this state. We pray, God, for our, our public officials and those who are in those types of positions, political positions. God, we ask in the name of Jesus, if you would touch each and every one of them, God, give them the mind to do what is right by your people, God, we need people who will stand up and who will do what is right. We're asking you in the name of Jesus, if you would strategically put people in places so that they could do your will, so that they could stand up for you, so that they could be anointed for your will and for your glory in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for the president of the United States and his cabinet. We pray for leaders all over this nation and all over the world, God that you will anoint them, that you will be in every decision that they make, God. Even before they make the wrong decision, we ask that you change minds, change hearts, and change wills, especially those decisions that will affect your people. God, we pray for the young people who are meeting us here tonight. They may not have even come yet, but God, we pray for the young people of this fellowship, the young people of this city, the young people of the schools that we teach in, of Greenville, of Lake Village, of Leland, and the surrounding areas, God. We ask that you would anoint the teachers, God, so that they may reach the hearts and the minds of the young people. God, I ask in the name of Jesus, if you would rebuke a spirit of slothfulness that has covered our children, and God, that they don't even have the mind to do the work. 
I ask you in the name of Jesus, if you would lift the veil, God, reveal to our young black men that you have a plan for their lives. Don't let them waste away standing on street corners and hanging out, God. I ask you in the name of Jesus, if you would reveal yourself to each and every one of them, God. I, especially our children, wherever they are, God, and whatever they're doing, God, we pray that you would bless them and that you would save them, that you would continue to protect them, God. Re remind them of the things that you they have been taught Remind them when they wake up in the morning and when they go to bed at night. Remind them of your goodness and your mercy toward them, God. Give them the mind to fall in love with you in the name of Jesus as you reveal yourself as the Savior of the world. Even when they struggle in this life, God, remind them of testimonies that they've heard, of sermons that have been preached, God. We ask you in the name of Jesus if you would save young people, God. Save young people in this city and in our surrounding areas, God, in our families, God, and in our homes, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for each and every one of your people here today who meet us consistently. I pray a special blessings on, blessings on their finances, God, on their homes, God. Don't let the thief and the robber break in, God. But because of their faithfulness, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you would bless them when they go out and that you would bless them when they come in, in the name of Jesus. God, I ask that you would reveal yourself to them, continue to give them a hunger and a thirst for you that only you can feel, God. Continue to take them to higher heights, God, and deeper depths. Open up our understanding as we study your word, God, what you would have us to do. Manifest your will for our lives, God, and your plan for our life in the name of Jesus so that we could fulfill you we realize that we will never be fulfilled until we fulfill the will that you have for our life and the plan that you have for our life. We give you full permission, God, to execute your plan for our lives. And we ask you in the name of Jesus, if you would bind every trick of the devil, if you would bind every wile of the devil, if you would bind every deceitful move that he comes to deceive us, that he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, we ask you in the name of Jesus, if you would have full control of our lives, we give you control. We hand it over to you, God, even as we, as we cast every care on you, because we realize today that you care for us. Oh God, we pray for our pastor, that you would anoint him the more, that you would strengthen his body, God, as he goes throughout the day, God, we ask in the name of Jesus, that every time he stands before your people, that you would give him a word, that you would give him a word that is for your people, a rhema word that is for our spirit, God, that is for our hearts, God. We don't want to be lost, God. We ask that if there comes a time when we won't hear you, that you would send a word by your manservant in the name of Jesus. God, we pray not only for our pastor, but other pastors in this city, our superintendent, our bishop and those who are our bishop, even the new bishop of the churches of God in Christ, leaders near and far, even in the religious world, God, that they would stand up and lift up a standard up for you in the name of Jesus. God, we love you. God, we praise you. God, we appreciate you for just being God. We appreciate you for just being God. We appreciate you for just being God. Now, God, as we study your word, we ask in the name of Jesus, if you would open up our understanding, give us ears to hear and hearts to receive. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, everybody, we are here tonight. I, if you are on Facebook, I want you to go ahead and share this feed with your cousin them. Share it with your nieces and nephews. Look to see who is on here tonight. If they are missing, send a word. Go ahead and share this feed through text, share it through uh, other means. Wherever you can share it, we're asking that you would share it because somebody needs to hear a word. We are going to talk tonight about the final hours in the life of Jesus. And you know that our children need to hear. Somebody call 
Solomon, call Christian, Cajunik, and those who are not um, at work tonight. I see Taylor is on here tonight. We thank God for her tonight. Oh, yes, my, my new baby. I forgot to tell her about um, Bible study. Hey, Mother Ollie. Mother Ollie is on tonight. But the new young lady who comes to um, church with me every Sunday, and that's something that a young, I think she's about 15 years old, on the church page, y'all. I want y'all to hear this. She went on the church page. She went to the inbox. And she said, look, I have moved to this city. I want to come to church. And that's how we found her. Isn't that something? A young girl who would go on and seek out a way to get to church. Then this brought her brother and she brought her sister. God still blessing young people. And so I say to you, um, let's get our young people on here tonight. They need to know um, that tonight is the night that the youth study the Bible. I'm talking to you, but while I'm doing this, I am also test texting um, other people to try to get their children on. Yes, yes, yes. Let's get these children on here tonight. All right. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Let me share my screen. Yes, we want to talk about the final hours of Jesus. The final hours of Jesus. All right, somebody's trying to get in. Let's let her in. All right. Final hours of Jesus. All right. All right, so tonight we're coming from Matthew chapter 26. We're coming from Matthew chapter 26. I don't know why this thing is not holding on here. Oh, I see why it's not. I'm trying to be able to see. Hey, Sister Sandra Ross is on to, with us tonight. Amy Jones, uh, Sherman Harris, we thank God for you all being on with us tonight. So yes, let's look at the final hours of Jesus is life. All right. When Jesus has finished teaching, he told his disciples, you know that two days from now will be Passover. That is when the son of man will be handed over to his enemies and nailed to the cross. So we talked, uh, I think the last time uh, that we, um, study we talked about how Jesus began to prepare his disciples for the for his death and and it, it, it's something to me how that even right up to the end he told them two days from now he will be nailed to the cross by his enemies he predicted his death so it only only uh you know I, I just can't help but wonder you know why were they acting like they were caught by surprise. When he told them it's time for Passover, two days from now to be time for Passover. And that is when the son of man will be handed over to his enemies and nailed to the cross. And you know, I, I, we look at that and we wonder why the people, why the disciples were not more prepared. And I, I think about that same thing when we talk about the pandemic, because pastor and I from time to time, we'll talk about the pandemic and the things that we've seen. And we wonder how is it that the people still don't see and the people still don't understand. They're going about life as if nothing has happened. Oh God, what does it take to get our attention? Verse three, at that time, the chief priests and the nation's leaders were meeting at the home of Caiaphas. They planned how they could sneak around and have Jesus arrested put to death we must do not do it during passover because the people will riot now i want to tell you saints of god those of you who are living everything that you know how as sure as jesus hurt nobody all he did was went about doing good but they still betrayed him. They still 
tried to come up with some kind of way to get Jesus, to catch him, to crucify him. I want you to realize tonight that as much as you do is everything you know to do to help people, you don't try to hurt anybody. There are still people who seek to, be, to betray you, who seek to do you harm. If they did it to Jesus, the savior of the world, we in no way compare to him, but you best believe they're going to do it to you. He said, marvel not. In other words, don't be surprised because the world hates you. He said, they hated me. So he has already warned us. So sometimes, you know, things happen to us. And of course it breaks our heart, but it seems like it catches us by surprise. Now, the apostle Paul told us in many situations, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. I don't want you to be in a position that you're caught off guard. I don't want you to be in a position that you do not know. I want you to know that these things are going to happen. So here you find Jesus. These people are meeting behind his back, so to speak, but they did not catch Jesus by surprise. And when your problems come your way, it does not catch him by surprise. So they are meeting at Caiaphas' house. Caiaphas is the high priest. And they are there meeting, trying to figure out how they can arrest Jesus and kill him. They want to kill the man who opened blinded eyes. They want to kill the man who unstopped deaf ears. They want to kill the man who healed blind Bartimaeus, who healed the lepers. They wanted him dead. Oh, God, help the people today. Jesus was in the town of Bethany, eating at the house of Simon, who had leprosy. A woman came in with a bottle of expensive perfume and poured it on Jesus' head. But when his disciples saw it, they became angry and complained. Why such a waste? He could have sold this perfume for a lot of money and given it to the poor. Now, I got the wrong picture on here because they said she poured it on his head. But I want you to notice something here. She came in here. She poured the perfume on Jesus' head and look at the reaction of the disciples. They became angry and they complained that this is nothing but a waste. We could have sold this perfume for a lot of money. Now, didn't Jesus just tell them that he's going to be uh, arrested in two days and that he was going to be nailed to a cross soon after. But here they are. Here they are arguing about the cost. Let me tell you something. Whatever you do for Jesus, somebody's going to be complaining. I don't care what it is. You, if you, I, Whatever you set out to do for God, you're going to have, you're going to find the people who complain. But this did not stop this woman. She anointed his head with the expensive perfume. Jesus knew what they were thinking, and he said, why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing for me. You will always have the poor with you, but you won't always have me. She has poured this perfume on my body to prepare it for burial. You may be sure that wherever the good news is told all over the world, people will remember what she has done and they will tell others. So it's like immediately she went down in the hall of fame and he says she, her story will be told wherever the good news of the gospel is told. Now I want you to realize something. Do you really think that the disciples was concerned of, uh, in, in the King James Version? You'll see in some of the Gospels where they say, you know, we could have sold this uh, perfume and gave, gave this money to the poor. Just how much do you think they were concerned about the poor? Jesus knew their hearts and he spoke to the condition of their hearts and he let them know exactly what this woman was doing. She was preparing his body for his burial. Judas Iscariot was one of the 12 disciples. 
he went to the chief priest and asked, how much will you give me if I help you arrest Jesus? They paid Judas 30 silver coins, or we say it in the King James Version, 30 pieces of silver. And from then on, he started looking for a good chance to betray Jesus. How many people do you know named Judas? I don't know of anybody over my lifetime who named their child after this man, the man who sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Years ago, Elder Past used to tell us that that was worth $19.20. He sold the savior of the world. And I wanna know from you today, what are you selling Jesus for? What are you giving him up for? Is it for a silver and gold? Is it for popularity? Is it for a man or a woman? I want to know from you, what are you selling Jesus for? Oh, yes, it's easy for us to criticize Judas, and he ought to be criticized. But I want to know today, what are you selling Jesus for? What are you giving him over for? What are you giving up living for him for? Because I want you to realize something. Judas is carried was saved. Judas was there when Jesus sent them out by two by two to cast out devils. And you know that demons can't cast out demons. So Judas was saved at one time. But one scripture says, then entered Satan into Judas. If you allow the devil to enter into you, he will enter into you. And he will do just what you allow him to do. And so, yes. Judas saw a way to make some money. Judas wanted to know how much will you give me? And when they gave him 30 pieces of silver, he started looking for a good chance to betray Jesus, the son of God. On the first day of the festival of thin bread, Jesus' disciples came to him and asked, where do you want us to prepare the Passover meal? Jesus told them to go to a certain man in the city and tell him, our teacher says, my time has come. I want to eat the Passover meal with my disciples in your home. They did as Jesus told them and prepared the meal. Then when Jesus was eating with his 12 disciples that evening, he said, one of you will surely hand me over to my enemies. The disciples became very sad and each one of them said, Lord, you can't mean me. Now we know this is our, this is the contemporary English version for our children, but the King James version says it this way. The disciples begin to look at Jesus and they say, Lord, is it I? Will I be the one to betray you? Will I be the one to hand you over to your enemies. I want you to realize something. Jesus knows our heart. We cannot fool him. He answered one of you men who has eaten with, with me from this dish will betray me. The son of man will die as scriptures say, but it's going to be terrible for the one who betrays me. That man would be better off if he had never been born. So Jesus told them, say, yeah, my enemy, the person who is going to betray me, is sitting at this table with me. He's eating with me. Have you ever found out that somebody who has eaten with you had betrayed you? Even as horrible as that, that, that sounds and as, as gut-wrenching as I think that would feel. How do you think Jesus felt? Because see, none of us came to the world to die for the sins of the world, but he did. He had been with, with Judas for three years. He was one of his intimate disciples. You know, sometimes they went out and there were 70 that followed him. Sometimes, other times, there were thousands that followed him. But I'm talking about the 12. I call them Jesus' church members. 
He was the pastor for those 12. And so he taught them intimately. He, be, he began to prepare them to be the best preachers, to be the best carriers of the gospel. But yet there was still who would betray him. And he said that man would be better off if he had never been born. Judas said, isn't it something how the guilty always speaks? Judas said, teacher, you surely don't mean me. King James Version said, Judas said, master, is it I? And Jesus said, that's what you say. But later, Judas did betray him. So the King James Version puts it this way, thou hast said. In other words, Judas, you know who it is. You know that it's you. And I want you to know that I know too. During the meal, Jesus took some bread in his hands. He blessed the bread and broke it. Then he gave it to his disciples and said, take this and eat it. This is my body. Jesus picked up a cup of wine and gave thanks to God. He then gave it to his disciples and said, take this drink, take this and drink it. This is my blood. And with it, God makes his agreement with you. It will be poured out so that many will have their sins forgiven. From now on, I'm not going to drink any wine until I drink new wine with you in my father's kingdom. Then they sang a hymn and went out of the Mount of Olives. So Jesus began to, he, I, we call this an object lesson. He took the bread and he began to tell them that his body would be broken even as he broke the bread. He took the wine, the unfermented wine, which we uh, look, use today, we call it grape juice. He took it and he began to give it to them. And he told them, this is my blood. And I want to take a minute to talk about communion because in some, some of the other scriptures, he tell, tells us that as often as we do it, we do it in remembrance of him. Look, let me tell you all something. The blood does not magically turn into the, I mean, the, the wine does not magically turn into the uh, blood of Jesus as some people teach. The bread does not magically turn into uh, the, the body of Christ. These things are symbolic of him. But he said, Jesus said, as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. It is symbolic of the body of Christ. It is symbolic of the blood of Christ. So when we have communion, when we have holy communion, let us be as serious minded as we can. Let us not joke about the bread. Let us not joke about the wine. You have people who make jokes and say they're at home uh, taking uh, communion and they're making jokes about it. Absolutely not. I dare not joke about something that represents the body of Christ, something that represents the blood of Jesus. I wouldn't dare joke with anybody about that. But as a matter of fact, when that time comes, I want to make sure that I'm worthy to partake of the body of Christ and the blood or the So let us always, always be mindful that we must be right in order to take of the body and the blood of Jesus. Jesus said to his disciples, during this very night, all of you will reject me, as the scriptures say. I will strike down the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Now notice what Jesus said here. He said, all of you will reject me. It had already been prophesied. I will strike down the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised to life, I will go to Galilee ahead of you. 
Now here again, Jesus tells them exactly what's going to happen. He says, I'm going to be killed. He says that after I'm raised from the dead, he says, I'm going to, before you, I'm going to meet you in Galilee. But instead of them paying attention and getting the message, here comes Big Mouth Peter. Peter was always the Big Mouth one of the group. Why is this thing not charging? Pastor, set me up, y'all. All right, is that it? Yes, that's it. You know, put, put the thing on. All right. So Big Mouth Peter says in verse 34, verse 33, Peter spoke up. Even if all the others reject you, I never will. Peter said, yeah, I can see how you can say that about the rest of them, but now I want you to know something. If it comes down to you, I'm right or die. I will never reject you. Even if all the rest of these reject you. I know you said somebody going to betray you. Now you saying everybody going to reject you. He said, not me. You don't know me. I'm not going to reject you. Jesus replied, I promise you that before a rooster crows tonight, you will say three times that you don't even know me. But Peter said, even if I have to die with you, I will never say, I don't know you. And all the others said the same thing. Isn't that something? They all said the same thing. All right, that's part one. We'll pick up there. We're going to do our video. We'll pick up there with part two next week, but let's look at our video and let's play our game. Let's see what we got. Let me see if I shared my sound. Yes, I have. Divided among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine till the kingdom of God shall come.
This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. For the next two weeks, I want to do something different. I'm going to give you more information about it. I think for the next two weeks, we will only be on Zoom for the activity that I want. So I'm going to invite those of you who find who are usually with us on um, Facebook. If you would join us on Zoom, we give, can give you the information. If we want to do something very special over the next two weeks, I think I'm going to be doing something that the Lord say the same. But for those of you, the children who are with us, let me go ahead and give you give you the game code. We only have 10 questions. Let me give you the game code. you the link if you are on Facebook the game go to joinmyquiz.com go to joinmyquiz.com there it is in the uh, there it is in the uh, chat box those of you who are on Zoom those of you who are on Zoom but if you're on Facebook go to joinmyquiz.com you will go to the game code is 922-775-922-775. That's the game code. All right. Come on, let's get everybody in. 
All right. I'm going to go ahead and get started. If you want to get in, you can still get in. 922-775. That's join. Let me share. I'm sorry. I'm not sharing my screen, am I? All right, so you can go to joinmyquiz.com and enter the game code 922-775. I'm going to go ahead and start for these young people. Christian and Austin are battling it out for first place. For first and second, we're for first place. We're now in first place. Austin is in second. Marcus is in third. Austin is back in first place. Christian is in second. Marcus is in third. Taylor, then Marcus. Sorry. I don't know why it must be Markel. Must be the one in third place. All right. Christian is back in first place. Austin. Markel, Taylor, and then Marcus. I don't know, Marcus may have had some trouble. No, that's two different people playing. One is Marcus and one is Markel. I don't know which is which, though. I don't know which is which. All right, just wait with our young people. It takes them about two more minutes, three minutes at the most. Wait so that you can congratulate them. last question is going to do. All right, Austin is now in first place. Austin is now in first place. Let's see what Markel's last question is going to do. All right, Markel is in third place. Come on, Taylor. Come on, Mar uh, Marcus. Two more minutes. All right, Taylor is now finished. Marcus, you got about two minutes.
Right now we have Austin Splund in first place. Christian Tool in second place. I believe that's Markel who's in third place. Taylor is in fourth place. And I believe that's Marcus who is in fifth place. It's been a while since we've given our children any prizes. So everybody's going to get a prize tonight. The top three will get 10 and the last two will get five. So you all can go ahead and start sending me your cash app. Go ahead and start sending me your cash app to make sure it is still the same. We're waiting for Marcus. He got about two more questions to answer. One more question to answer. Got to look at those last few questions. Look like a lot of people had trouble with those last few questions. Don't forget to send me your cash app. I heard from my babies in Arkansas. They are at, one of them is at soccer practice tonight. So he's going to try to do everything he can to try to make it to some of the other Bible studies, but he's at soccer practice. All right, I think that's about it. So I want you all to go to the, well, let's see. Yes. First place, Austin. Second place, Christian. Third place, I believe, is Markel. You all are going to have to tell me if it is any different. So what I need you to do, those of you who are on Zoom, go ahead and let's congratulate our young people for doing a good job tonight. Those of you who are on Facebook, go ahead and um, send your congratulatory messages in the comments to our young people for doing such a good job tonight. All right. That's going to be all for tonight. Remember, I'm going to get back with you. We're going to do something different for the next two Bible study nights. I think we're going to be ready for it the next two Bible study nights. So God bless you. We'll see you on Thursday night. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow for prayer. And then Thursday night will be adult Bible study, prayer and adult Bible study. God bless you. We love you. Stay safe. God is.